Hi, I'm Dan Joyce. I'm the director and archaeologist at the Kenosha Public Museum in Kenosha, Wisconsin. For those of you who don't know, Kenosha is right between Chicago and Milwaukee on Lake Michigan. Uh, we have, uh, like many places in the country, we have a lot of mammoths and mastodons around here. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about what mammoths and mastodons are today. Uh, they are basically prehistoric elephants. They're in the same family as modern-day African uh, savanna elephants, modern-day African forest elephants, and modern-day Asian elephants. And we'll talk about all of these and the differences between, the, between all of them. Mammoths, we have several different types of mammoths in North America. Uh, in this area, we have two different types. They range about 10 to 12 feet in height. They're pretty, at the shoulder, they're pretty tall. Uh, one is a woolly mammoth, uh, and another is called the Jefferson's Mammoth. And if we go further south, the southern two-thirds of the United States have another mammoth called the Columbian Mammoth. And he's even bigger. He's 14 feet. So we have a woolly mammoth that's 10 feet, Jefferson's Mammoth that's 12 feet, 14 feet for a Columbian Mammoth. These are huge elephants. Um, the big difference between uh, these types of elephants are their size, they're kind of, uh, well, they're, they are cousins. They're very, very closely related. Uh, we know that the, if we look at the uh, genome of uh, the woolly mammoth and the Columbian mammoth, uh, there's only less than 1% difference between them. And if you look at the difference between humans and chimpanzees, that's two, only 2%. Uh, so you can see they're very closely related. They have uh, this lump on top of the head, which is kind of interesting. It's like a, just a big hairy bump uh, that's a peak in their skull. It's very distinctive of them. They have very curved tusks. That's another way to tell the difference between a mammoth and a mastodon. Mastodons have more straight tusks. These guys weighed between six, eight, 10 tons, depending on the species that we were just talking about. These guys are grazers, and grazers are basically eating grass. Grasses, uh, tundra, sedges, arctic sagebrush, uh, which is a tiny little plant, uh, tiny little bush, uh, dwarf birch, and we mean dwarf, very, very small in the Arctic. Uh, this is a very different world these animals lived in. Uh, they became extinct about 12,000 years ago. Uh, mastodons are a little bit more recent. They're only about 10,000 years ago. But talking about the teeth, these are grazers. So these are flat top teeth. This here, these ridges, if you can see, this is a woolly mammoth. And this is the top of the tooth with these ridges. And you can see it's very flat. And the other tooth on top would just grind right against it. And it's interesting because they have kind of like a conveyor belt system of teeth. Uh, they start growing in the back of the jaw and they get bigger and bigger and bigger as they move forward. And as they're moving forward, they just keep grinding them down and grinding them down, so they keep moving. And when they get small enough in the front, they're just spit out and they keep getting replaced. Uh, but there's a definite disadvantage to this in that if you live long enough, you run out of teeth. Uh, and then you can't eat and you starve. Uh, this is a part of a woolly mammoth jaw here from Alaska. And what's really interesting about this, you can see that tooth is worn down to nothing. Uh, it's right down to the gum line, and this animal starved to death. This is probably a 60-year-old animal. Uh, so this is, a, this is a pretty old elephant, so to speak, a mammoth in this case, woolly mammoth. Uh, we have a bunch of different species of uh, uh, mammoths, as I said. One of the other ones, the really big one, 14 feet, is a Columbian mammoth. And these two, uh, this is a woolly mammoth, this is a Jefferson's mammoth. They're very similar. There's not a lot of difference between the two, except the Jefferson's mammoth is a taller mammoth. And then over here, we have Columbian mammoths. This particular specimen is from uh, South Dakota. This one's from Florida. You can see one of the major differences between Columbian mammoths and the other mammoths is that 
these ridges that go across here, they're pretty widely spaced. You can see them over here as well on this Florida specimen. Whereas on the Woolley and the Jeffersons, they're pretty close together. So a lot of paleontologists uh, classify animals by their uh, teeth. Uh, that seems to be their big diagnostic part. Uh, they use the whole skeleton, but teeth are probably the most important. Uh, so that's why they come up with these different species. The teeth are a little bit different. Uh, another tooth that both mammoths and mastodons have um, is a tusk. Here's the tip of a very tiny tusk, actually two tips. The tip in the background is uh, cut in half lengthwise. And if you look closely, you can see kind of a triangle look to it. Each one of those is another layer that's put on every year that the animal's alive. So you can tell a lot about the animal's health, its well-being. If it's a female, you can even find indications of how many times it, it gave birth uh, in the tusks. So it's kind of cool. We know a lot about woolly mammoths in particular because there's so many frozen ones that come out of Siberia. Uh, woolly mammoths kind of go around the entire globe. They're in northern Europe, northern Asia, uh, all the way through Canada, parts of North America. They were just south of the glaciers when the glaciers were here. Uh, so we get a lot of frozen ones that are coming out of Siberia. This little piece of uh, what looks like leather here is actually a piece of uh, frozen mammoth, or pet petrified, uh, uh, preserved, whatever you want to call it, mammoth skin. Uh, where we have some hair from Siberia. There's two types of hair on the mammoth. Uh, one is a guard hair, it's pretty thick, and then an undercoat that keeps the animal very, very warm. It's a very fine, fine type of fur. Mastodons weren't grazers, they were browsers. And what's that mean? Well, they're browsing uh, the leaves off of trees, off of bushes, they're stripping them. Uh, they're taking uh, flowers. Uh, they're taking uh, little flowering plants of various sorts. Uh, there was a mastodon discovered in Ohio uh, many years ago that had a part of its uh, gut uh, in, intact. And his last meal was uh, buttercups. So it's kind of interesting to see that. The teeth are very different because they have a different diet. Uh, if you look here, we have four different mastodon teeth. Uh, all of these four are local mastodon sites. And you can see there are high mountains, and sometimes those little mountains are worn down. Uh, it's almost like a mountain range on top. And that's great for getting those branches in between those teeth and just pulling your head to the side and stripping all the leaves off and eating the leaves. Uh, it's wonderful. Here's a top view of a ma uh, mastodon tooth here. Now, mastodons and mammoths are eh, kind, of, uh, kind of related. Uh, they are both prehistoric elephants. They're in the elephant family. Uh, so to speak. Uh, they are um, related distantly. About 30 million years ago, they split off from mammoths, and the mammoths went off in a different direction and developed into something else. Uh, these guys developed exclusively in North America, whereas mammoths developed uh, in, in Eurasia, mostly, and ended up coming over to North America uh, when there was a land bridge many, many years ago. Um, just to show you some teeth comparisons, we have mastodon here, and then we have an African elephant. It looks kind of similar, but it's got a different, it's got projections kind of like this, but they're different. Um, this is an Asian elephant. Uh, Asian elephants, you know, are even smaller than African elephants, uh, but you can see this is a woolly mammoth. You can see these guys are closely related, Asian elephants and uh, woolly mammoths. And they are so closely related that they are a closer relation than mammoths are to mastodons. Um, and then this, is, of course, is the Colombian mammoth again. Again, you can see how those, those plates, what they call these plates in here, because they're almost a stack like this together. They're much broader and much thicker than the woolly mammoth. One more mammoth that we haven't talked about that was alive during the, the late Ice Age. Remember, we have the woolly, the Jeffersons, the uh, uh, Colombian, and we also have dwarf mammoths. Uh, dwarf mammoths are mammoths that are isolated on islands, and there's a tendency for animals that are isolated on islands to get smaller in size over time. So a dwarf mammoth might be six foot at the shoulder. Uh, so it's not exactly small, but it's, eh, it's smaller, much smaller than the other mammoths. 
Uh, we have them on the Ch Channel Islands off of Southern California. Uh, we have them on, a, on an island called Wrangell Island off of Northern Siberia, so up by the North, near the North Pole. Uh, and what's cool about that is those mammoths didn't die off until 4,000 years ago. Uh, they were around when the pyramids were around, uh, even though there were no people up there to bother them. <laughs> uh, they eventually died from too much inbreeding. Uh, there wasn't enough genetic variability within that population to sustain them past 4,000 years. Uh, one of the things about the world uh, at the time we're talking about, this is the end of the Ice Age, so this is 10 to 12,000 years old. Uh, mammoths are becoming extinct uh, in the area around 12,000 years ago. And um, Macedon's about 10. So what we have is we have these, these animals going around. We have about 33 different sites just in Kenosha County that we know about that have yielded mammoth or mastodon bones. Uh, we have one musk ox, actually an extinct form of musk ox that came out of Kenosha County as well. But this is a very different world. Uh, this is a world that looks much like northern Canada is today rather than what we're looking at here today. There's a lot of stunted small spruce trees. If you come to the museum, you can see all these murals, these background murals for the exhibits. You got little spruce trees like these, black and white spruce. They're very skinny. They're, they're widely spaced apart. It's easy for these animals to walk in between them. Uh, we have uh, tundra around here, which of course you don't have today except in the Arctic, uh, and lots of grasses. Uh, so the end of the Ice Age too, we've got a lot of glacial melting going on. Uh, it's obviously the glaciers are melting, that's why it's the end of the Ice Age. So we have uh, a lot of water here, uh, tons and tons of water. Uh, elephants uh, today, uh, will drink um, 60 gallons of water a day. Uh, mammoths were the same way. They needed a lot of water. Uh, they needed a couple hundred pounds of food every day. Uh, so you can see these things on the landscape were, were not only uh, eating the vegetation, uh, they were changing the vegetation as well. That's a pretty big impact. Once they're gone, uh, things change dramatically in addition to the glaciers being gone. Uh, we've got two glaciers coming out of the North Pole, basically, that cover North America. Uh, and at times, they grow together into one. Uh, they've gone at different points of uh, the Ice Age. They go as far south as southern Illinois. Uh, so it's really, they really cover a lot of land. Um, it's one reason Illinois is pretty flat. Woolly mammoths are really in the grasslands more than anything else in the tundra areas. Um, you can see them in some of the open spruce forests. Uh, but that seems to be the habitat that the Jefferson's mammoth, its cousin, uh, really lived in. And that's what we had around here is more open spruce forests. Um, if you look at uh, the end of the, uh, the, the first records uh, in Kenosha County about what the land looked like when people first got here uh, in the 1830s and really started to settle, the vegetation is interesting. Uh, it's not a whole lot different from what it is today. But the big difference is about one third of Kenosha County was water. Uh, and water of some type, whether it's wet prairie or marsh or lake or stream or pond uh, or, or little river or whatever, uh, that's a lot of water. And I think that's what attracted uh, a lot of the animals during the Ice Age. These water bodies were even bigger back then at the end of the Ice Age because of being fed by the glaciers. Uh, so that's why I think we have so many mammoth and mastodon sites in this area.